Amen. Welcome everybody to the meeting today. Our December meeting. Merry Christmas, everyone. Um, coffee and donuts are out there. No charge today. It's our Christmas present to you. I don't know. How big can we get? Uh, <laughs> um, the uh, I want to welcome any new members. We got any uh, any new people here today? Uh, one guy in the back here. I forgot your name already. Dale. Dale. Dale in the back. Are you a Turner? Yes. A new Turner. Uh, I have been playing with the lathe for about 20 years. Oh, okay. So, All right. Not proficient, but... Okay. Well, welcome to our group. Anybody else new here? Got my Uncle Russ back there next to Dale. I, I dragged him along. He's... Okay. Uh, Mike McClum. Mike McClum. You look like you you're Mike. I know you. Because you look really familiar. <laughs> All right. You're, you're a new turner, too, like this past summer? Or? Right. Okay. All right. Well, uh, any other new members? members today. Um, <laughs> Steve back here, raise your hand Steve. He's our membership person. If you want to become a member of this group, uh, see Steve. New members is $25 a year. Um, uh, current members, if you're renewing your membership, uh, you have today to do that. they have been for 20 bucks for all of next year. Otherwise, as of January 1st, the price for uh, everybody is going to be $25. So, um, um, today's the last day to do that. Members are, um, the benefits we have for our members are, we have a, uh, one of the, a huge benefit is a supply cable over here which is set up. Um, we have CA glue, accelerator, face mask. Um, we're looking at getting an order of anchor seal which I forgot to make a sheet out of. I'm going to work on that. But, so they have supplies over here and they're probably half the price of what it costs to buy those supplies at Woodcraft. So uh, it's a great deal. Roger's the first to see on the break, and he'll have them over there. We have a library set up out here in the, in the, uh, next to the coffee pot in the entryway here. Um, John's been running that. The library has all the cards inside, just like when you were in high school going to the library. The cards in here, if you want to sign out a book or a DVD, pull the card out, put your name, phone number, and uh, date, today's date on the card and give it to John who's at the library and he'll file it away and uh, you can have that book and you know for two three months we don't really track them but eventually we track them when it gets to be three months and we haven't seen it come back. So that's out there for members. Um, we also have a raffle which we're not doing today but typically we have a raffle with uh, you know used to some pretty good deals on there, gift certificates, wood, tools, things like that that you can pick up cheap. Um, because we had to swap meet this morning, we are not doing the raffle today. Uh, well, here, give me that money. I'll hold that for you. <laughs> uh, we also have mentors. If anybody wants to work with a mentor, how many mentors do we have in the room? I'm one, I'm south. We have Jeff, he's north. We have John, he's way north. Um, Ken's over here on the at east side of town. George is south. So we have, uh, we have mentors around the area that can help you work on stuff, whether you're new or old. You don't have to be a new person to say, hey, I want to work with a mentor and have them help me with something. If you've got something you're struggling with, get a hold of one of us, you know, we'll, we'll work something out and we can help you with that, you know. Um, we we want to we wanna help everybody uh, turn the experience to bump it up a notch. Um, tools, we have a Wolverine set up here with a grinder. If you have tools and you don't have a Wolverine set up or some kind of a grinder set up, um, you have two choices. You can see Mark and buy his Tormac out there he's trying to sell <laughs> with all the attachments, make him an offer he can't reseal, refuse, or you can bring your tools in here every month and somebody here will help you grind them. We'll set up the grinder and we'll get them things sharpened and get them in order to try to get you through another month. But you should be doing that. Before I had a Wolverine, I thought I was doing a pretty good job at sharpening my tools until I bought a grinder and a Wolverine and stuck it up there and thought, holy crap, I'm so far off I couldn't believe it. So uh, it, you, you should be bringing it in if you do not have some kind of a jig for sharpening your tools. Bring them in and let somebody here help you sharpen them and get them things back on track. Uh, let's see, how about a treasure report? Jim, I've seen you here somewhere. Here's a, turn that on, there's a light. Hey, okay, okay. Um, uh, Right now, this time of the year, one of the largest uh, pieces of income we have is membership. So, like uh, Doug said, if you have uh, to renew your membership, see Steve. We uh, received about $515 just last month and 575 in October just for membership. So, 
Right now we have uh, $6,823 in the bank uh, as of November. Okay. This is a summary sheet that shows each of the month's activities, both expenditures and income numbers, broken down by categories, showing all the way from January through November. Uh, December will be updated after this meeting. I'll, I'll hand this around. Please make sure I get it back. There are a couple of receipts on this we need to keep. So I'll just yeah, start. Let's just leave it up here and let people look at it. Okay. All right, that's great. It's underneath the TV. Right there. So want to take a look at it? Just go ahead and take a look at it. Get an idea of what the picture is for the year. All right? Thank you. Um, Rose Engine. George, how's that Rose Engine come along? Has everybody got theirs built? Is that still going or what? I don't know what they're doing with it. <laughs> okay. I, I think they, uh, they went on vacation. Is everybody on vacation? Well, George is around. If you want to talk to George about your Rose Engine project, how it's going, see him on the break and he'll help you uh, move it on a little farther down the road. He's going to be not available after the 28th of this month. For a while. For a while. Maybe it's going in and has some surgery and I'm going to be cheap with some problem Okay. Large amount of I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, the Grand Rapids Public Museum, they're always looking for someone to, uh, to run their antique lathe. They have like a 1905 lathe, great big old wooden one I ran for a while. It was a lot of fun. You're, you're set up in a room where the people walking through the museum can see you. Uh, you know, so if you're a wood turner and you're interested in working in that, for uh, they work like three hour increments, you know, you can pick just Tuesday, you know, I want to work from 9 to 12 or something. It's, a, it's not very strenuous, it's a lot of fun. If you're interested in that, see Ken. We're still looking to fill a few positions. We're trying to put their schedules together for the next year. I know there's a couple of people that have contacted me. Um, get back with Joyce as soon as you can. That way uh, she can take care of her obligations and they have a good idea of what they're starting off the year with. Okay. Um, <coughs> yes, Jeff. On, uh, on uh, the museum, I said, we sent something out last month. Uh, there were uh, four, four folks who uh, donated, I think, nine pieces okay. uh, for their online auction. And you know they all sold. And they were very, very thankful. Uh, last the year before last, we only had three pieces that were donated. Uh, so, you know, it, it, it helps the museum. So, okay. keep that in mind. You Thank you, everybody, for donating to their cause. So, we appreciate that. Um, let's see. Next month, our meeting is going to be finishes. Um, I'll be doing lacquer. Let's see. Pete is not going to make it, so we do not have epoxy with Pete. We have CA with Ken. Um, John, where'd John go? I seen you a minute ago. Are you going to do poly white? Jeff is gone. Jeff is out of town. So, so now that's falling on you. <laughs> Thanks, John. You've really been, you've been really, yeah, you've been really stepping up a lot lately, John. We appreciate that. <laughs> so, and then uh, let's see, Buffy with Aaron. Is Aaron here? There you are. Okay, uh, he's going to do some buffing. And uh, I think that's the things, the four things that we have lined up for next month. So it should be a pretty good um, uh, a demonstration on those types of uh, finishes. Uh, the, our bylaws, we've updated those, we attached them to the newsletter. Um, at this point in time, we are ready to make a vote on uh, whether or not we uh, approve our new bylaws. So at this time, I'm just going to ask for a show of hands. Does everybody approve the new bylaws that we have sent to everybody on the newsletter? Okay, all opposed? Ah, now i got to write out unanimous. I can never remember how to spell that word. I'll, I'll figure it out. <laughs> all right, thank you. So then the new bylaws have gone into effect. Um, we'll have them posted to our uh, newsletter probably for another couple of months in case anybody's interested. Maybe we'll just permanently leave them attached. Hey, Kitty, how you doing? <coughs> I haven't seen him before. Um, let's see. Anchor seal. We are going to try and place an order of anchor seal. Um, I'm going to have a pad up here, which I'm getting ready right now. Anchor seal. If you are interested in a gallon of anchor seal or more, um, put your name on here. Um, it's probably going to be about twenty bucks a gallon, right, Ken? He's talking. Yeah. 
they, we think it's going to be 20 bucks a gallon. We need to make an order of like 20 to 25 gallons. We're trying to work with the Kalamazoo Club to get them guys too so we can get that big of an order on. So I have this pad of paper right here. I'm going to set it right up here. So if anybody wants to uh, sign up for some anchor seal, put your name on there so we get an idea how much anchor seal we can uh, uh, move. Well, this is Anchor Seal 1. I think it's $30, $35 a gallon. Because Anchor Seal 2 is 23 or something. Long shelf life. It has a long shelf life? Sorry, guys. No, what, what's the retail value of Anchor Seal 1 per gallon? Our cost is going to be approximately $25 a gallon. Oh, it's $25 a gallon. 20 to $25. We're going to have to come up with a little bit better way of packaging it than we did last time. I think we probably ended up losing <coughs> four or five gallons of it due to breakage. We put it in milk jug jugs, yeah. which we found out after a year, it makes that milk jug brittle. Yeah. yeah. So you so even some of the heavier plastic jugs we've had minor issues with. So um, as far as retail, I know the Anchor Seal 2 is going about $28 a gallon. Okay. At a local store, we'll leave it at that. Um, okay. So I don't know. I know there's been some uh, some stuff expressed that people want the one over the two. I have not used both <coughs> side by side. Can you explain what the difference is, Jeff? I, I, I think your seal one works, and your seal two doesn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know I have anchor seal too, and it doesn't seem to work. You know, I, I put it on, everything just cracks. So I quit using it. I got half a gallon, and I quit using it. I have not seen one available, you know, locally, so I'm not sure. John? I think the only way you can find out why we don't have a jug is work, because we bring jugs in. I know I saved an empty varnished can, you know, that I had varnish in, you know, steel can, in case I wanted to get some. A little plastic, a little like an entry. I would think antifreeze jug would work. Yeah. Get all of your local um, dealership or, or parts store or uh, you know, automotive shop. They probably throw them things away left and right. You know. Um, but we're going to be getting in five gallon drums, right? So you have to bring your container. So if you sign up, start figuring out what kind of container you want to put that in. I think it's twenty five bucks. Twenty five bucks. I'm estimating the right number, okay? Because I think. I think we bought something like 20 gallons, and it was plus shipping or something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. How much did you drive down from there? Where is it? What? Where did it come from? Yeah. I don't know. So you're volunteering? Oh, yeah, Joe. <laughs> we'll see. Thanks, Joe. So, okay, so. We've got guys going on vacation, you know, wanting to bring that wood back out of those 60 foot trailer. They just as well bring back out 55 gallons of double container. <laughs> okay, well, arrange that for us. We need something like a volunteer. All right, we're always looking for people to volunteer to do stuff. <laughs> okay, uh, so that's how the break pads over there. Sign up if you're interested in the gallon, and we'll work from there. Um, we want to set up a committee to get a professional wood turner in here, maybe one or two or three times a year. Um, the committee, you know, we're, we don't know how many people we want to put on this committee, but probably, you know, two or three people. Um, at least three. Um, uh, we want to uh, have them uh, basically you know, start trying to contact professional turners that we could possibly get into the area here and uh, get you know get a price on what they would charge and something like that, so we can actually start to get these people on the schedule. I think a lot of them are already booked up through um, halfway next year already into the fall, but you know we possibly might be able to round something up for next fall and start getting some professional turners in here, you know, on a regular basis, you know, maybe every six months or something like that. Um, we, we think we probably can afford it. Um, we just need to have a, a committee that's, that's working on it. Um, I know I've tried a few times where I'll see somebody that's coming to, um, to the Detroit Club and I've had emails from people and I, I email these people and I, I message them on Facebook and everything and they're terrible at getting back. No one ever gets back from me. So, I mean, I've had two or three, and one of them actually sent me an email, somehow got my name and I said, yes, we are very interested. What's your schedule? When can I get you in? I sent them like three emails, no response. So, I, I, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's not an easy thing from what I can see. Um, so, we'd like to get a committee 
John, you are, he's going to be our new demonstration guy, right? Oh. I thought, <laughs> did you tell me that you wanted to do demonstrations? <laughs> don't show up too much meaning. <laughs> so probably John's going to be part of that, but they don't have to be board members. You know, we want to be a separate committee, and then they will just give with somebody on the board, probably John, or any one of us, let us know what they found, what, what the costs are going to be, and, you know, and, and work things out from there. What we you know, like what we did with the last guy, Scarcella, was he came in, did a demonstration at our meeting. Then in the afternoon, we had hands-on demonstrations at the cost of forty dollars a person. Um, and I thought we filled it up. How many people would be interested in something like that? You know, paying forty to fifty bucks for an afternoon class uh, with somebody. So I, I think we have the interest to do that. So we just need to see if we can round up some some uh, professional turners and get them interested in coming to Grand Rapids. What does a guy like Lyle Jamison charge? You know? I think seven hundred. Seven hundred plus expenses. We think that's kind of the goal for a lot of them. You know. I think it's about you know on average probably five to seven hundred. I think five is cheap. Seven is probably an average. It's the plus expenses that scares the heck out of me. It's, it's almost a unwritten check. Ken, would you? He's doing a lot of video. He does video now. I don't think he does. Not really much talking. traveling, but I think mean, I'm yeah. usually with those guys traveling. It would be good up in somebody's house. This is yeah. free. Yeah. Can be a he, he, for the video, yeah. yeah. I have seen that information. So, um, his video is basic bowl, and he's already been to like Ron's retreat, and I don't know if, if a lot of people would pay for that at this point. You know, I'd be curious because we do basic bowl, you know, three, four times a year, uh, just hands on here. We'd probably be looking at somebody that's more of a professional and thinks. Um, individualized area, you know, of, uh, you know, their, their expertise. So, if you're interested in that, get a hold of somebody on the break. You know, me, Pete, John, Ken, we're all on the board. Um, <laughs> let us know uh, <laughs> that you're interested so we can try to get together a committee and start to get a game plan together, okay? Um, let's see, festival. Ken, how's festival? Step up to the mic. Festival, there's a lot of stuff up in the air right now. Um, I guess what I need to know, based on you know what we've done years past, how many people are interested, and how many people are willing to put some serious time into it this year. My understanding, and nothing is cut and dried yet. My understanding is there's going to be no tent, so we're going to have to come up with some small tents to pursue this. My biggest concern is. What do we do evenings, mornings, with the type of stuff that we have down there? You know, basically that big heavy duty tent that was down there was hardly an, enough structure to withstand the winds that moved through last year. We found tablecloths, free boosts down, and that's with the tent flaps down when we came in one of the mornings. So I'm thinking, you know, if we go to these lighter tents, we're going to have to do some type of partial breakdown. Whether we haul our stuff out of there or not will depend on what type of security is provided. And again, we, that's all the unknown. Um, what's going to happen here right after the first of the year, they're going to release registration information. We have about 30 days to fill it out and get back to them. It's a very short window. So I guess I need to know. What, what they, what they it's, it's, it's the first full weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of June. Okay, that's, that's a given. So whether it's the first, second, third, or... Yes? How successful was it last year? We had, as a group, our second highest year in total sales. Roughly 170 pieces, about $5,500 or so. Three years in a row, we're above that. Month. Yeah, 40, right around 45 to 55 hundred dollars sold out of our group. So, I mean, it's a great show for us. Um, there would really be no question if they had the tent in there uh, because everything stays pretty intact. It's not bad for myself and maybe another <coughs> person to go in there and get everything set back up in the morning. It is some long days, but you know, we'll deal with that as it comes. 
But I guess at this point, my biggest concern is just what's going to happen to our stuff when we leave down there with weather and whatnot, and what we have to go through to either break down, partially break down whatever we have set up versus, you know, getting it set back up in the morning in a reasonable amount of time. Um, I think next year, too, the hours of the sales area, wherever it is, is going to be increased. We'll probably be going until 10 o'clock at night. So it's like a 12 hour day, 10 to 10. Yeah. So who's ever there setting up and taking down, you're looking at 14 hour days. Easy. Yeah. And last year they were talking possibly no security this year. That's, well, that's an issue. I've had a couple conversations and I think that was the general rule of the surveys they sent out is that there's no way we can participate without some type of security. And the big thing is the whole expansion process for the Calder Plaza area has been pushed back, but there are no longer the tie downs for the big tents on the plaza. My guess, and this is strictly a guess, is that it'll probably be set up about the same area it has been, but set up differently because they're not going to pay to put in the hold downs in the plaza and in a year, year and a half, two years, come through and tear that all out. <clears throat> so, Last year they changed a few things. It was kind of a dry run for the big disruption this year. So when we, when we take a break, if you guys are truly interested and want to pull the time with us, please let me know. If I get very little response, I don't know if it's worth pursuing. Okay? Um, myself, myself, Doug, a couple others. It's going to take the whole group to make this work, not just a few people. Okay? And again, I'm sorry I can't be a little bit more forthcoming because I just don't know. Yeah? I have a technical point of canopy. Okay, that will help. And it, uh, it won't be as well as that big tent. Well, and, that, and that's part of it. That's why you know, I'm getting into this, you know, what are we going to do overnight? So, I know there's a lot of, a few of uh, the 10 by 10s in the group that we could probably use. You know, that's, I think the shelter myself is probably the least of my concerns this early on. Um, I guess it's going to be the man hours. Okay? Any questions right now? Otherwise, please, the break. Look me up and uh, let me know. Okay? <laughs> um, the AAW is doing scholarships again for uh, two schools. Uh, that we can nominate one person from our group to, uh, not to attend, but to be put in the running to maybe get a scholarship. The schools are Aramar and uh, the John C. Campbell School. So we can, as a group, we can nominate one person to send the name to AW, and then they, out of all the nominations, I think they pick five or ten people or something. So if you're interested in that, come and, and see me on the break. Okay, let me know, and I'll put your name on the bucket. You have to be uh, a member of our group. I don't think you have to be an AAW member, do you? Do you have to be? Okay, you have to be an AAW member also. AAW. So, you got some friend? Okay. So, yeah, if you're interested in that, come and see me on the break, because we have to put that name in uh, before our next meeting. Right now, I have two people's names that uh, we'll have to uh, go through. If you want to put your name on that list, we'll... Uh, We'll, we'll consider, the board will sit down and figure out uh, which person we uh, would like to send somebody to send the name to and see if they will accept it. And then when they come back, they'll be automatic demonstrators. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You come back and you do a demonstration. <laughs> yes. See, I knew you'd be good for demonstrations. You're already on top of it. So, okay, we're going to do show and tell. Um, yeah, yes. Just one thing. Um, uh, I got an email the other day, and Ted, Ted Lover's wife wants to uh, uh, sell all of his equipment, made, tools, everything. Um, and, uh, you know, what I understood was that he wanted to donate the money to the, to the club. Uh, I don't know if that's, that's you know, I haven't, I haven't got that from her, uh, but I, I, I got that from any through the email. We're probably going to do it, I think, uh, maybe early February, uh, something like that. Probably going to need uh, a couple of people to, to help. But, yeah. Uh, 
Got a lot of stuff to work. It, it takes it takes some organization, but uh, uh, I'll, uh, I'll we'll we'll keep information coming out. Um, we'll send it send it out. Have Steve send. Hopefully, it we'll have some information yeah. by next month. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Who who had the who had the uh, um, air helmet out there? The, the Trenton. Uh, yeah. Bruce. Okay. Silver sail. Yep. Good. <laughs> so I just bought one like three months ago. I wish I would have talked to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, show and tell. Um, yeah. One more question. Okay. No. He, he said he wasn't going to go through another winter without heat in this room. Um, so far, he's going through another winter without heat in this room. <laughs> so. Uh, he had a he had a heater. He said he'd be willing to pay for somebody to install it. And then, but then this past like two months ago, he said that he was making arrangements to get that installed. That's I'm sure is what that hole up there is for. He put a fat bar up there and found out there's a double ceiling with like eight foot between this ceiling and the, the next one, which he didn't expect to find. So. Um, yeah. Yeah. However, the Grand Rapids members that would like to attend a meeting with Pete, they're welcome to come down and visit the, uh, the Kalamazoo Club. <laughs> if you're interested in going to the Kalamazoo Club, they have Pete. Yeah. See Fred. <laughs> Fred or Bruce, I'll help you out with that. Uh, okay, we're going to do, uh, we're going to do uh, show and tell. What I'd like everybody to do is um, talk into the mic, state your name. Um, do we want him to have him put the piece on top of the lathe so that he can put it on the on the film? We can put it on the TV. So if you have a piece, set it on top of the lathe here, and then then talk about it. Okay, now put this a little closer to it so you can point. But we'd like you to set it down so that Pete can zoom in on that, and we can get it onto the screen. We normally give a raffle ticket for our people bringing show and tell stuff in. Since we're not doing a yeah. raffle this month, remind me next month. And uh, an extra ticket. Okay, you don't have raffle tickets with you? I do. If you want to hand them out this I, week, I wanted to do it for the, for the challenge also. Because this is the challenge, and, uh, and I don't have a way to do it. So let's do a few. Yeah, we'll do a couple gift cards, but we're going to give everybody a raffle and we'll draw them out. Okay. So, so everybody's going to get uh, a raffle. We're going to draw a couple of names for, um, for gift certificates, for craft supplies. <laughs> So, so uh, yeah, I, I will start it down here. Um, see, I have two pieces. This was... Uh, over here. Uh, uh, oh, you want it way over there? Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, we can swap the camera. This was in the... Uh, yeah, that's light top. That's a vase that was in the uh, AAW magazine. I got this past weekend, I think. It's uh, eccentric. If you look at the bottom side, you can almost see that it's three-sided. Um, and it, it's just eccentric that it is, it, uh, curves on it, you know, and it's off-center. Um, so I made that for my wife for Christmas. I also have this eccentric uh, snowman, which will be our demo today. Is this my eccentric snowman. Um, I, I brought that in. Sure you don't want to just zoom in on there? Because that light is too bright, I think. I think the light's too much. Yeah, that, that's, yeah, turn on that light. Turn off the overhead light. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so anyways, this is going to be my demo today. Is the eccentric snowman. Um, and that's also going to be our next challenge for February. Is uh, have people bring in their eccentric, an eccentric piece, off-center training of some sort. Uh, these are two examples. Um, the, the base is kind of done between centers. Uh, this was done with a chalk, but if you could do it between centers, it would be a little tough. Uh, but there's there's lots of ways to do off-center turning, so that's going to be our challenge for February, is an off-center turning. So, what's that? No, I didn't hollow. I hollowed that one. <laughs> the, base is, the base is hollow. This is hollow. This is hollow. So yeah, three-sided. It, it kind of spins up as it goes around. So that is hollow. Uh, the snowman is not hollow. <laughs> that been a little tough. So that's it. Uh, everybody coming up here, start coming out up here. Well, that's like tickets. Thank you. And you'll get a ticket. Uh, put your piece up here on top of the lady so we can get it on the screen. 
Okay, I'm Charlie Fuentes. This is a title piece called Porcupine. <laughs> I made stuff for my daughters. They took them all and they just left me this one. What's that called? This is a South Carolina pine tree. So, uh, this base, or uh, this is a hollow farm I made at Rodman Tree last summer, and I just got around to finishing it, so uh, I just stained it with some red and uh, some Indian ink. Took a little airbrush and brushed it around. I was. Joe Hoff did a bowl. <laughs> <laughs> That's a napkin holder. It's a bird's eye maple and walnut. And so it Who did, are you? did get Steve Payne, <laughs> membership guy. So if you haven't paid, here I am. <laughs> Here's another one. We, uh, like I said, we can bring in flat work. So there's the mic. Okay. Uh, like I said, we bring in flat work. So this is my other uh, napkin holder. Not working. Uh, this is I finally finished my um, uh, beads of courage. Container, I don't know if that. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Very pretty. I, I was going to um, emboss uh, Jack Daniels on there, but I didn't think All right. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Jim J. Cash. I got some simple stuff. Uh, this, this was a job that uh, a lady ordered uh, from Michigan State. Uh, in Michigan State, they sell stuff in their store that's made out of wood from their campus. I don't know if you knew that. Well, anyway, uh, she said, can you make me something from Michigan State? She wanted rings for her husband and herself. So I said, okay. So she buys this piece of wood for 20 bucks, and it's about 24 inches long, 2 and a 16th thick by 8 inches. So I got three rolling pins, and this uh, shoehorn out of it and about seven rings. She was real happy. So she got two of the rolling pin, but it's just it's just sycamore and it was it was really, really bent. So I had to cut it in certain places to get them to be almost two inches thick. This one's a little bit under, but the other ones were okay. But uh, these I make all the time and sell them. I buy the kits from Penn State and then I make the ferrules for this out of brass, but the brass is getting pretty hard to find for it's two bucks an inch. <laughs> You're going to have to start making those sides like it. What? Socks like it. Socks. Uh, chef, uh, this is a piece of cherry that I got for a bowl challenge a couple of years ago. I finally finished it. <laughs> so I'm going to send that to my son down in North Carolina. That's nice. Uh, I just put some walnut oil, so I sanded it with walnut oil and then let it dry for a little while. And right now it's only got one coat of uh, satin white on poly. And then uh, Jeff was pestering me to bring this in. It was from a demonstration at Ron's Retreat for uh, marbling paint where you dip, dip it in the paint that's kind of suspended on a, on a gelatin solution. And uh, they're really a lot of fun uh, to do. And uh, I've got uh, instructions and stuff from uh, Steve Rohr's demonstration. He's from the Detroit area, he might be a good guy to bring over for a demo. Oh, yeah. 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 Bruce Dan Howard. And I have to admit, I didn't make this. This was made by one of the club members down in Kalamazoo. This is uh, made by a lady named Barb Buck. It's basswood. Wow. And this is her journey bead box that she's donated. Wow. 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 And I just I just thought it was so cool that I wanted to share it with you guys to inspire you to make more boxes. And nicer boxes. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ron Devil. This here is the bowl I made out of Russian olive oil. And I left it natural edge. And it's, uh, this is it's fairly soft, but it finishes up as you can see. And then I had a little saw cut there with a reciprocating saw, but so I 
I didn't want to take it all out, so I filled it. But, but that's my bowl there. Just a minute, I got one more. This here I call my pizza platter. <laughs> Did it start out flat? Yeah, it's pretty flat. I, you know, it's really tricky turning it. You know, because you have to food. <laughs> but, but actually, this, this, this is a cross section of a big crotch, right? Right there is both pit. And so I, instead of making a, you know, big, like I you know, normally do, a hard shaped bowl, I thought I'd try something different. So this, I made three of these. And this one here, I did have just a little crack in it, but I think it was there ahead of time. And I, I, I made another one. And what you do on, on, on these to keep them from cracking, because what happens is this, is, this is still green, right? So when it dries, this dries quicker than this. So this will open up, and then when it dries, it closes back up. But now you got to crack. So what I did, I covered it with newspaper. I wet the newspaper. I covered the outside with more newspaper. And I wet that. And I keep doing that for a week or two. Kind of depends. And then I kind of back off. And then this all dries together and it don't crack. I mean, I got one at the, the art gallery in Fremont that's not to work up like this. But there's no cracks in it. And, and, and so that's how, that's how I kept it from cracking is, is I made it dry. I, I, I wanted this to dry at the same rate that. So I I put more I put more newspaper on there and I kept every day I'd go out there and spray it a little bit, right? The, the outside more than the inside. Then it comes out and it'll crack up. Brian, did you do it on a face plate or a chuck? Uh <coughs> I'm sure I had it on a face plate, this big. Yeah. Big, yeah. yeah, I am not I, I got a chuck, but I'm not really excited about chucks when I do big yeah, stuff. Yeah. When I do big stuff because I like the faceplate because, boy, if I can stop my legs, then it don't come off. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, oh, let me, let, me, let me give you another hint here. When you're turning it, well, it wasn't this warp, but when you're turning this, you realize you can't see the edge, right? Right. I mean, it's very difficult to find the edge. So what you do is, I mean, you, you get this and you put a faceplate on it. This thing too. But so when you're coming in here on the inside, you can't you can't see the edge for beans, and so what you do is you you kind of get your tool on your tool rest about where you, the biggest you know the right say there the yeah the widest spot and then you start it. What I do my 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 bowl gouges are tapered way back. I mean I don't have a wing on them they're way back. So what I do is I I do it with braille. Oh, yeah. I, got the flute, I got the flute straight up, and I come in here, and I tick, 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 tick. Okay, I'm on. And I turn it counterclockwise, counterclockwise, up to about 11, and then I go right down. And it don't skate. If you try to do it this way at like 1, 2 o'clock, it skates. But if you do it like this, and the only thing you have to watch if you don't have your wings way back, is you don't want that wing to touch because then you got a big huge in there. And it's probably not an opportunity you can fix. <laughs> Sometimes. You can do a demo but, on that? Yeah, I can do a demo on it. Uh, but, but in fact, you can go in, you can go in and hollow it that same way. You come in and, and you come up this side, right? Yeah, yeah. And instead of going this side, leaning over the leg, you just do it this way. But but that's how you that's how I found out that's a good way to do it, is you come in with your feet straight up. And then you turn it just a little bit counterclockwise and go, you go right down, just beautiful. And, and it works. So anyway, that's it. Look over there, you can see it a lot better. That's it? The color's a lot better over there. All right. I'm John Mary. Uh, this is a I guess I would call it a cast off from uh, a log where they cut the top off and they start cutting lumber with it. It wasn't any deeper than this when I got it and somebody gave it to me and it was already dry. And I thought, eh, well, it's, it's ambrosia, so I'll try something. 
and it was a bit of a challenge to get that face plate on there and keep the bark on as dry as it was, but uh, I think it turned out pretty nice. This here is my, my daughter, and a lot of you guys probably remember when we were really young using fountain pens until they invented the ballpoint. And this is a fountain pen. My daughter, for some reason, I think we've come full circle. Now kids are like a fountain pens. Well, I'm calling her kids, she's 35. But, um, so this is a, uh, let's see it. Penn State kit? Yeah, it's a Penn State yeah. kit. The, uh, it's called the uh, Majestic Junior. And then it, uh, it's really nice. It's a really nice kit. The, the, it's a, I think it's pronounced Thule Burrow. It's from Morocco. It was in a, a package of uh, pen blanks that someone gave me. It didn't look like much until I finished it as CA glue finish. So I think she's really going to like it. I didn't bother putting ink in it. I doubt she ever will. It's probably going to sit somewhere and never get used. <laughs> so. I am John Marquardt. I'm in charge of demonstrations. I'm getting your name. So. <laughs> uh, this is, I've got two da three daughters-in-law. This is for the second daughter-in-law. Uh, kind of a jewelry box. And they can stick their rings on there if they want. That is some uh, spalted maple that my cousin gave me from Tennessee. I don't know if this mission is different than Michigan spalted maple, but <coughs> that's what it is. Uh, still got to work on the finishes. set it in the corner and nothing happened to it. It didn't turn into a cutting board by itself, so I thought, well, I'll turn it. And so that's um, my first really a real attempt at buffing out just an oil finish. I don't know that I'll do it again. I'm still in the learning process with buffing, so I can't wait till next month. Uh, the ornaments, um, Sometimes I get lucky, sometimes I don't. I was in the yard this week and they said, we're still putting your ornament on the tree. And I said, I made an ornament for you? Yeah. And they had, I had turned a bell and I dated it 1992. I think that's 25 years. Um, I've wrecked a lot of ornaments between them and now. Uh, but I keep practicing. Uh, this is Paduk. And I think mahogany and maple. This is spalted maple and cherry that has had a dye on it. Um, I've experimented with dyeing spalted wood, and it's kind of goofy because of the nature of spalted wood. It's kind of poor spots, and so it takes the dye a little bit different, but it still colors the wood. And this is uh, bocote and maple and spalted maple. Um, I've done quite a few of them, and a lot of them I look at and say, no, that's not going to pass. Some of them I keep, some of them I sell, and the bad ones I give away. Um, <laughs> and I'll look at it and say, no, that's not right. I'll show my wife and she'll look at it, and that's the final judge, and if it's not done past her, then some of that exotic wood burns pretty nice, too. <laughs> Who makes your finials? Who makes my finials? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want a demonstration on finials? <laughs> Pardon me? I was asking if they wanted a demonstration. It's very finials. boring. Uh, it takes time. And if you go to the retreat, maybe last year, we can see it done. <laughs> Uh, 
piece off of the job, remodeling job I did. How did that turn? Pretty nice? Yeah. It, uh, Was it that thick to the stairs you glued together? On this? Yeah. No, it was, it was a thick piece. I think <coughs> it might have been the edge of the uh, countertop piece, and, and that, that's glued together, but you can never see it. <coughs> and then, uh, about five years ago, I saw on Craigslist, I think, uh, somebody saying they had a big white pine tree that they cut down and uh, they were giving away the chunks. So I went and got one and I found out that I really like turning white pine. Uh, I like the, the knots in it and everything. It, it's a lot uh, more durable than I would th think pine would be. But. So, <clears throat> two years ago, a friend of mine uh, videotaped uh, about a two foot white pine in her backyard, tipping over in the, the rain in the springtime. Mm. I said, uh, well, save me a hunk of that and I'll turn you a bowl. So I did turn him a bowl out of that, it was about 11 by inches diameter, about 10 inches tall, and I got two, about two more bowls out of that same hunk. So this is probably going to end up being a, a kitchen utensil on the countertop. Hi, I'm Mike McClung, I'm a beginning wood turner, and this is probably my fourth thing I've ever made. Um, it's a uh, pepper mill made with jarra and laminated walnut. I uh, had a lot of fun making that. Uh, the biggest problem I had making it was uh, drilling the holes. I tried to have Irwin bits from Menards, those didn't work. Then got some CMT bits and those didn't work. And then I stumbled across these uh, Colt Rotostop bits. And they go through end grain like butter. And I made this for a gift uh, for my mother. Well, 
Can you hold it up? <laughs> don't don't pass that around. <laughs> um, I learned how to make the li I, I learned how to make these from Stuart Batty. I learned how to make the little ones from uh, Steve Sinner. Um, it's really relatively simple. Um, it just takes a steady hand and a sharp tool. Uh, just chuck up a small piece of maple. You have to have something that is the tightest grain possible. Uh, boxwood works well. Maple works okay. There are a number of other woods that work okay. Birch does. Um, turn a small little tenon. Uh, bring a drill in from the end and just and make the cut with the drill. And then turn the profile with the smallest, sharpest skew you have. And it takes about two minutes. <laughs> but, I can wreck it faster than that. <laughs> <laughs> you have a glove? Uh, <laughs> uh, attrition is high, but uh, satisfaction is. Yeah, I mean, it's a wonderful thing to make at a fundraiser or a demonstration or something like that <laughs> because people look at those and most. There are a lot. Oops. <laughs> there are a lot of guys who can't see them. Don't do it in the windstorm. Yeah. Yeah, well, you just make another one. What size, <laughs> what size skew did you use? I've got a hole over. I, the smallest possible. I think, uh, you know, that box of freebies that I have out there is some bar stock that you can harden. It's uh, O1 tool steel. Uh, if anybody's interested, I do a demo on heat treating. Yeah. Uh, you can make your own, of course. Um, it's easy to harden. Um, and then uh, if, if you have something that's just an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch long, it's kind of like a Robert Roseanne style skew that he uses for his uh, finials on his um, ornaments. Uh, Was that green wood when you turned it or dry? This? The, the goblet. Um, it was dry. Um, this is uh, Brazilian mahogany. Uh, it's the kind of wood, there's a guitar manufacturer in Sparta, Wisconsin, and uh, they make the uh, high-end bows if you're a hunter. Uh, and they also make guitars in the other part of that building. And I got some of the chunks that from the lumber dealer that supplies McPherson's guitar woods. And this is uh, really nice because it's clean, clear, stable, um, and like all the mahoganies, it turns like a dream. So um, it just takes a little time. You can do this on a mini lathe without any difficulty. Uh, it just takes, uh, you just have to be careful. That's all. What did you support the, the tail stash with? Do you have a, um Jam chuck in there or a ball or something in the end of it when you're turning it? Uh, I think it was just a clump of paper towels. Okay. <clears throat> you want something that will slide and not yeah. burn. Yeah. Um, the trickiest part is finishing the foot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not difficult. It just takes time and care. <clears throat> As you can tell, I'm a beginning winter. Um, my wife um, is very fussy about when she makes her salad. She does not want the onion board to get mixed up with any other board. So I, I took a, a marker and drew an onion on the board once, and she thought that was wonderful. But of course, it comes off. So then when I saw these uh, bands that uh, Ken, Ken brought in a while back, I thought, oh, that, that will solve the problem. So I uh, laminated it. Takes a few uh, days to rule them up, but uh, my uh, kids and friends have loved these. So this one is, uh, oh, this one is just um, uh, poplar, I think, yeah. And uh, this is number 13 and 14. I don't think I'm going to make any more. 